If you're a fan of combat racing games, then oh boy did you have a bad time up until about 2 or 3 years ago. Every game that came out in the genre tended to be a bit meh, either lacking variety, lacking content, lacking polish, or just lacking in general. A lot of them could not hold a candle to what I consider as being the most satisfying combat racing game ever made. Roll Cage Stage 2 As the name would imply, this is a sequel to Roll Cage, a game released in 1999, one that's it's okay as a game, it's, it's fine, but Stage 2 just outclasses it in every aspect. More cars, more weapons, more tracks, more environments, more everything. This was a combat racing game that you could enjoy, well, I, at least I enjoyed it for months, maybe years. It was a permanent fixture on my Pentium 2 for many, many years. And I enjoyed playing it by myself because Roll Cage does something that Again, a lot of games that came out in the genre up until, well, I would say up until the um, Gas Guzzler series started really kick things up, this game offered a lot of content in terms of single player and multiplayer. No matter which one you like, you had a lot of stuff in here. And the main thing you had, the most important thing you had was a bunch of cars that you cannot flip. Cars that you could drive so fast that when you got over 400 kilometers an hour, the front of the car would just ignite. It would burst into flames. Well, not actual flames. It was more of a heat effect. A heat effect that sort of gave you a sense of extreme speed better than any motion blur effect. And you could use these cars to race around circuits that were placed in all sorts of locations, like Mars or in the sky suspended by technology or underwater or in what I believe was space station or something, there were a lot of locations. Well, there were six locations. Six environments, each having about three maps. Some of them had four maps each. Maps, well, tracks that were filled with hazards that you could blow up and leave your opponents in the dust or give yourself a boost if you exploded them at the right time to send you propelling forward. You also had shortcuts that you had to learn how to negotiate because this game had... it had a physics model that was a bit insane. Your car would control odd. Now people that have played Revolt may notice that the cars sort of handle a bit like their miniatures or something, but from all the art you see of the game, you sort of get the feeling that these cars are about as big as a house, some of them, and yet they handle like they're really short rockets. Some of them go, I believe, over 600 kilometers an hour and are very hard to control. But to some degree that's part of the magic of the game because, well, what's the point in having complete accurate control of a car that can drive on the ceiling and on racetracks that are made for you to drive in places that normally cars shouldn't be. And they also had weapons. All around those racetracks you could find a bunch of pickups that you could use for fun and profit. Things like missiles, guided missiles, missiles that would hit the first player, that'll be the equivalent of the, uh, what was it, blue shell in Mario Kart. You had teleporters, you had things that slow down time, you had machine guns, you had a thing that shoots out of you and just freezes the enemy, you had spikes, electric spikes that shot out, out of you, you could explode your own car, you had a shield, you had another kind of shield that hit enemies and hurt them. And if you got two of them, they would stack and give you an upgraded version of the power-up. And for doing stuff like this, for blowing up other players, well, you couldn't blow them up permanently, but you could hit them, you would get points. And in the total racing mode, which is by far the best racing mode there was in the game, you were rewarded not only because you finished first or finished second, but also because you dealt the most damage, you received the most points for causing other mayhem on the track. Sure, you could cheat and let the AI just finish the race, and while the AI took its victory lap you could shoot them continuously, but that would be cheating, and also it didn't work 
constantly. Because this game didn't have just standard races, no, 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 no. The single player had three campaigns, type 1, type 2 and master campaign, and each of them had a series of leagues through which you would progress acquiring new cars, acquiring all sorts of other unlockable game modes, and you really had to learn how to drive because each of the leagues ended with a knockout round where weapons, although they didn't matter, I mean having that weapon that just hits the first player when you run the last lap is really useful, you did not get points for hitting the enemy. You had to learn the tracks really, really well, especially in some of the later leagues like the Aurora one where things got difficult. Like imagine going at 600 kilometers an hour in a space that's filled with obstacles and where driving on the walls and on the ceiling isn't so much of a suggestion anymore, but it's sort of a requirement. Also managing to fit your car in a very, very narrow tunnel or hitting a if you couldn't. And when you got tired of the campaigns or if you finished them, you had other game modes. You had actually a training mode that taught you how to drive. It actually taught you how to drive through multiple types of terrain, even icy terrain, which wasn't in the normal racing tracks. No, no, that terrain was in scramble mode. Scramble mode was, how should I put this, track mania. If you've played track mania, you know what scramble is. Scramble gives you a track a set limit of time and if you beat that limit by a certain time you get a medal. It could be bronze, it could be silver, it could be gold. Those tracks tended to be insane. They defied physics because some of them were pieces of dirt floating in mid-air on a planet that didn't seem to have a ground. They were quite creative and very difficult, but you were rewarded with more things to unlock. Then you had time attack, you had demolition where you just went around blowing stuff up, you had a bunch of game modes in single player. And then you had multiplayer, split screen, multiplayer, I believe you also had land, but still split screen, multiplayer for four people. This is where the game absolutely kicked major ass. Playing this when it first came out in an internet cafe with other people was one of the best experiences I've ever had in an internet cafe. You know, the kind of cafes that although have internet and computers, they're mostly there to be used for gaming. Roll case had combat modes and its multiplayer. It had races too, yeah, you could race other people, but it had combat arenas. Combat arenas that just took advantage of everything in this game. You have to realize that up until Roll Cage, I, I don't actually believe there were 3D racing games. Or at least not 3D combat racing game with cars. Yeah, there were some with planes. But in this one you had cars. Cars that didn't need to be on the track they could be on the ceiling, so when you were hunting for your opponent, you had to, from time to time, look up because that's where the opponent may be. You may see your opponent coming right at you in a circular level and not realize that the opponent, about 10 seconds ago, fired a missile in the other direction and is now just distracting you so you won't notice it and not dodge it. And Roll Cage Stage 2 also had another game mode, one that really makes it what I said in the title, the original Rocket League. For you see, in this game, after you finish the last mission of the training mode, you unlocked Rumble Soccer. Rumble mode, Rumble Soccer, sounds a bit familiar right? And here you would have sadly only one map with a pillar in the middle for reasons that become apparent very quick and there was a giant boulder on the map. I kind of remember the boulder being bigger than it actually was but it was there and your objective was to score a goal using that boulder either by crashing into it and ramming it into the enemy goal or by using a bunch of weapons or power-ups or anything you had at your disposal. Sadly, this game mode was only 1v1, so if you want the, the full experience, yeah, you should probably go play Rocket League. But this had a certain element that Rocket League doesn't have, namely rockets. 
that you can shoot with and a lot more offensive and defensive power-ups than even rumble mode has. I never really got to play this game mode a lot, uh, mostly because when I was playing it at the internet cafe, I did not know exactly how to unlock it, only one person knew and he didn't say. But it was a more secretive time back then, where people guarded, closely guarded, the secrets of gaming. And then the internet came along and ruined everything. Rollcase Stage 2 is a game I wholeheartedly recommend because it still seems to work on Windows 10 with just minor tweaking, even though it was released 16 years ago. The US version just celebrated 16 years. And even though it's that old, it's quite enjoyable and again quite functional. And sadly you can't seem to buy it anywhere because it's one of those abandoned games from a bygone era that no one actually seems to remember who owns the rights to it or at least has no intention to actually release it. But that's not a problem because some of the people that made Roll Cage have another game. It's called Grip and you've probably seen it on a previous show on this channel. And you're gonna see it again soon because Grip is going to get a multiplayer mode, an actual functional multiplayer mode in the next update. And Grip is incredibly close to what Roll Cage was. And I've got a feeling that adding multiplayer to it is gonna make it great. Now they have said they won't bother adding Rumble Soccer because Rocket League already does that, it does it quite well, but bring on those combat arenas, those gravity defying, tire shaped, floating combat arenas. If you're interested in Grip, you can find it right now on Steam Early Access for the price of 16 euros. Roll Cage Stage 2, you can't buy it anywhere because, well, like I've said, it's kind of a bit abandoned and forgotten and no one really cares about it anymore. But so far, Grip has been an okay substitute. Thank you for watching this show. If you enjoyed it, please consider watching some of our other videos and maybe sharing them or giving a thumbs up if you feel like it. And if you really, really liked what you saw, please check out our Patreon page. For just $1 a month, you could help us make much better shows and get some rewards in the process. Or you could consider buying my book called Tale of Doom. Volume 1 is out now and available for just two dollars. And as always, if you thought it was horrible, you know where to find me and complain about it.